points in 2016. This is historic because it's the first time a sitting U.S. president has visited Utica since Harry Truman in 1948. Yeah. The people of this region have had a tough time for a long time, but we're still standing. And we're thrilled after decades of failed policies, sometimes from both parties, to have an ally standing with us and fighting for our region. I've had the honor of getting to know and work with President Trump over the last year and a half. And let me tell you, whether it's taking on the bad trade deals, cutting taxes for small businesses in the middle class, or protecting our traditional values, like respecting our flag. Yeah. Respect for our veterans, supporting our farmers, our family farmers. And with Remington Arms founded right down the road, protecting our Second Amendment rights. President Trump is truly a voice for the forgotten men and women of our region and, and our country. It is my honor to introduce our president, the President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. I'm here for Claudia. She has been incredible in Congress. She's helped us so much. She is just a wonderful person. She said, could you possibly come up to this community that, as you know, I know very well because I have a lot of friends here. I'm looking at all the faces. I think I know about a third of them, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and I just want to thank you very much for all you've done. And hopefully we put Claudia right over the top where she belongs. I think she's... I don't think she's going to have any problem. But, you know, I look at, uh, I look at this uh, area in the state. Ed Cox is here, by the way, a great friend of mine. Where's Ed? Ed! Ed, how, what are you doing back there? What are you doing back there? Thank you, Ed, for being here. New York Republican State Committee, and I think it's doing okay, right? You know, uh, considering the fact that we have the highest taxes in the nation in New York, and we should have no taxes, if Andrew Cuomo, if he took over and if he — now, think of it. If they would have allowed a little bit of fracking and taken some of the richness out of the land, which, by the way, is being sucked away by other states — you know, they don't have state lines underground. You know what that means? That means it just goes down, down, down. We don't get it. You look at what's happened in Pennsylvania with the money they've taken in. You look at what happened in Ohio with the money they've taken in. They're fracking. They're drilling a little bit. They're creating jobs. And this place, it's just so sad to see it. And we had the potential to do it better than anybody. And it's now — it's dissipating. It's dissipating. Because that stuff flows. Do you understand that? It flows. And they probably have those little turns. You know, they make the turns at the border. It goes like this, right? And all of a sudden, someday, you're not going to have that underground maybe so much. And it's a shame, because you could have had no taxes. You could, have had, you could have had the lowest taxes instead of the highest taxes. And it's very sad to see what's happened with New York. I was actually thinking of running for governor, but then I decided hey, uh, You remember, right? No, I was serious. I was thinking, because I said — I said with — I said with some — the use of brain power and common sense. You people could have had a boom town up here. This could have been Boomtown USA. You know, you have among the richest in, in the United States of sitting under your land and you don't take it. And other people are taking it, meaning other states are taking it. And I said to myself, I think maybe I'm going to consider running for governor very strongly. And then I decided to run for president instead. <laughs> And that worked out. I want to thank Shell Farley. Where is Shell? She's around here someplace. Good luck. 
I know. I see you on television a lot. You're working hard. I think you have, like, three different parties. I don't think Ed's too worried about that, right? You're okay with that, Ed, right? She's got the Conservative Party also. And uh, I've watched you, and I know you're really working hard. And honestly, on the merits, you should win. You know, I know your opponent very well. She's been up to my office looking for campaign contributions <laughs> over there. And she's very aggressive on contributions, but she's not very aggressive on getting things done. And because she hasn't gotten very much done. If anything, has she gotten anything done? No. Uh, one, bill. one bill. One bill to rename a post office. You just go in and fight. You may see some big changes. You may see some things happen. You know, they saw it in my election. Of course, I felt I was going to win. We're having these massive crowds. And a lot of people that traveled with me, I'll never forget, there was a certain show on television. And uh, the two people that truly, these were reporters, they truly hated your favorite president. <laughs> hated. They hated. And they were watching a speech. I was making a speech. We had 25, 30,000 people in this massive auditorium, uh, stadium, actually. And they looked at each other. They just looked. They said, do you believe this? They were not happy. That was the day before. And then the day of the election, they said, you know, I guess that's the way it goes. But I felt all you had to do is see the enthusiasm. So, Shell, I can say this. You, uh, you may surprise a lot of people. You may surprise, because people know it's wrong what's going on. And she's just a puppet of humor. You know that. He put her there. Uh, I've never seen anybody like this. Uh, your opponent, okay, your wonderful opponent, was the most pro-gun person that you've ever seen. The day she got that given position, she all of a sudden became, like, anti, like, 100 percent. So uh, people get it. I found that. You know, in the campaign against crooked Hillary, I found that people <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I found that people get it. So I just wanted to — so I wish you luck. And, Ed, keep up the good work. You're doing really well. Uh, you vote for somebody other than our fantastic Claudia. You're voting for higher taxes. They want to raise your taxes. They want to actually end these massive tax cuts that everybody in this room has gotten that have been so popular, that have really uh, made our economy the strongest it's ever been in the history of our nation. This is the strongest economy we've ever had, with the best jobs market. So they want to raise your taxes. They want to open your borders. You know, they want to open borders, okay? They want those borders to be open so nice and wide, let everybody flow in. And they think they're going to be Democrats, right? They probably are, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> they might not. But they want them to come, and that's one of the reasons. I really believe that's one of the reasons, because a lot of other reasons don't make a lot of sense. But they want open borders. They don't mind crime, because it comes with open borders. So, obviously, they don't mind crime. They hate ICE because ICE, you know, is rough and tough, and that's what we need with certain kinds of people. I don't think that MS-13 fully understands the niceties of life. Do you think? No. So these people are great people. These are great people, but they're strong people. They're tough people, which is what we need. Uh, they don't like law enforcement. They don't want to take care of law enforcement. They don't take care of our military. They don't want to take care of our vets. Other than that, they're fantastic. Do you agree with that? Other than that, other than that, they're wonderful. But — and you better be careful, because you do have that big, big gun plant. How far is that down the road? How, where is it? One mile down the road? Well, you better be careful, because they want to end your Second Amendment, and they're putting a big move on it. And Cuomo wants to end your Second Amendment more than anybody. Cuomo wants to take away your Second Amendment. Now, he called me and he said, I'll never run for president against you. But maybe he wants to. Oh, please do it. Please. Please. No. He did say that. He did. And maybe, uh, maybe he means it. The one thing we know, and they do say, anybody that runs against Trump suffers. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. But, you know, uh, really, uh, we talk about uh, Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi. Maxine Waters, the new face of the Democrat Party. Maxine Waters, he's a real beauty. Maxine. Boy, oh, boy, I watch her. Crazy Maxine. 
low IQ person. <laughs> low IQ. And this is really what is steering, to a certain extent, the Democrats. I mean, she gets up and she wants people to be violent. She wants people to attack if they happen to be on our side, which is now turning out to be, don't forget, 306 to 223. That's a big difference. 306. Remember? There is no way to 270. There is a way to 306, but not to 270. I said I kept going up to Maine, Maine, Maine. I love Maine because I needed one. And I went up to Maine five times. And they said, why do you do that? I said, because I knew, because I believed the fake news. I said, you know, they said there's no way, but I needed one. So that's why, Sheldon, this is why we have to, you know, just always assume. And I ended up getting the one. I won that one that I wanted. But I didn't need the one because we got many more than the one. But I thought what I'd do is just do this a little bit different and just read out some of the things that we've accomplished. Because nobody's ever accomplished like we've accomplished. And just it's poor. Look at this, page after page. And, and I've been here, right? I've been here for less than two years. And I can tell you, and they'll go and check it. The one thing with them, they fact check. But even their fact checking is wrong. If I'm right, or if I'm 97.3% right, they will say, he's got a Pinocchio, or he's lying. Oh, they are bad people. Look at this. 3.9 million jobs now. It's 4 million jobs created since the election, which nobody would have believed. Here's one that you should use all the time. More Americans are now employed than ever recorded before in our history. Right? So we have the highest employment in history. Think of it, the highest employment in history. Manufacturing jobs growing at the fastest rate in more than three decades. We've created more than 400,000 manufacturing jobs since my election. Now, you heard we weren't going to do manufacturing anymore, right? And I used to say, excuse me, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I said, excuse me, uh, does that mean we're not going to make things anymore? What are we going to do, buy everything, like, from other countries, let them have all the jobs? And those are good jobs. Those are the real great jobs. But 400,000, and that's going up to 600,000 very quickly. And that's a number that was supposed to go way down, and it's going way up. And by the way, we've brought back the steel industry. The steel industry now is one of the hottest industries. I was with two or three people that are in the steel business. I don't know where they are. But uh, and this is a great reception, by the way. We appreciate it. But a few people in the steel industry were saying how incredible the business is. They never thought this would happen again. And it's become a great industry. And, you know, steel isn't like other industries. We need steel. You need it for defense. So we need aluminum, which is doing great. Economic growth last quarter hit 4.1. Everybody said the most you're going to do is 2. It was 1.2 when I started. 1.2. And I'll tell you, it was 1.2 and heading south. It was going down. It was regulations that did it initially. And now it's regulations and the big tax cuts. So it's, it's really new unemployment claims recently hit. Think of that, a 48-year low. OK? African-American unemployment, you've heard this, has just achieved the lowest level ever recorded. Ever recorded. Asian-American unemployment rate achieved the lowest level ever recorded. Women unemployment rate, really, oh, only 65 years. Sorry about that. <laughs> lowest in 65 years. Asian unemployment, the lowest ever recorded. You know, here's a good one. Lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for Americans without a high school diploma. How's that? Is that a good one? Right? That's a good one. The veterans' unemployment rate reaches lowest level in more than 20 years. Almost 4 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps since our election. You know what that means? That means they went out and they have a great job. They have jobs. The Pledge to America's Workers has resulted in employers committing to train more than 4.2 million Americans. That number is now up to 5 million Americans. And we're committed to vocational education. You know, I went to school, and I remember going to school as a young guy, and I'd 
be a nice student, and we had good students. We had some people that weren't good students in the class. They were terrible students. But they could blindfold and take apart a motor or an engine. They could do things that we never even thought about doing. They had a great aptitude. I say vocational is very important. They had this great talent, yet they were lousy students, so we have to remember that. 95 percent of U.S. manufacturers are optimistic about the future. That's the highest ever recorded. Signed the biggest tax cut and reform in history. The tax cuts, $300 billion have already poured back into the United States from overseas. I think that number will end up being about $4 trillion. This is money that would have never come back to us. You saw Microsoft is bringing back $230 billion. I had dinner the other night with Tim Cook, who's fantastic. And they're spending a tremendous amount of money in the United States. And I asked him, would you have done it without our tax reform and our tax plan? He said, no, we wouldn't have done it. Number one, you wouldn't have been able to get the money back in. Can you believe that? You couldn't bring the money back in. That's really good, good stuff. You cannot bring the money back into the United States. Spend it someplace else. Uh, we uh, helped win the bid for the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. I helped a lot. I was called by a big Democrat politician. I don't know if he'll agree to it anymore to say. But he said to me, Sir, would you take a call from the head of the Olympic Committee? I said, but I'm not president. This is what I wasn't president. He said, uh, the president won't return his phone calls. I said, why do you say that? He said, the president will not. President Obama wouldn't return his phone calls. Would you take a call from the head of the Olympic Committee? I did. I couldn't get him off the phone. He was a really nice guy. He was so, no, he was so happy that somebody finally returned his phone calls. And we got the 2028 Summer Olympics. And I made that, that phone call was uh, before I took office, by the way. So that was good. Helped the United States, Mexico, and Canada in our United bid toward the 2026 World Cup. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. We got Anwar, one of the largest fields in the history in anywhere in the world. Uh, one of the great, one of the great energy fields anywhere in the world. That's in Alaska. Uh, they've been trying to get that long before Ronald Reagan. Nobody could get it approved. We got it approved. That's going to be one of the great energy sources. We approved the Keystone and the Dakota Access Pipelines in just about week one. They were dead. They were dead. I had dinner the other night with one of the gentlemen involved in the Dakota Access. He said, sir, we were dead. I never met him. We were dead. It was not going to happen. Now it's open. Tremendous numbers of jobs were produced in building it and everything else. So we got it started. Likewise, Keystone. I think it's going to be a total of 48,000 jobs during construction, and also environmentally better than the alternatives. Enacted regulatory relief for community banks and credit unions. They were dying. They were dying. They were being put out of business. Obamacare, we got rid of the individual mandate, which is the most unpopular aspect. I would have gotten rid of everything, but as you know, one of our, one of our wonderful senators said, thumbs down at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we had it all gone, but we'll get rid of it anyway. Mo Obamacare is essentially decimated. We've also come — and, you know, once you get rid of the individual mandate, which we've done, that really was the end of Obamacare. But we've also helped where people that are still stuck in Obamacare were trying very hard to keep their rates down. You know what I'm talking about. You know, people are shocked that we've kept their rates down. And uh, the increases have been much less than people were projecting that they'd be because of what we've done, not because of what they would have been 30, 40. They were 120 percent when I was running for office. But we've worked very hard on that, Secretary Azar. I had something passed called right to try. Does everyone know what that is? You don't want to know, in a way. That's when you're really sick. You're terminally ill. And we have potentially a great cure, but it's going to take five years to get it approved in FDA or wherever. And we get the people now are allowed to go and try those things, which may work and they may not work. But people, if they didn't have money, they stayed home. They had no hope. And if they did have money, they'd travel all over the world to try and find a cure. We have some cases — I'm very proud of it. They couldn't get it approved. This has been going on for 30 years. Right to try. Think of it. It's a great name. Right to try. Right to try. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not. So now, if you have — some kind of an illness, you're terminally ill, you're very, very sick, you have the right to try a, a potential cure 
And it's good in a lot of ways. You also learn whether or not it works. You know, I mean, what's a better, what's a better sampling? But you try, and uh, people are really happy about that. I'm very proud of that. My administrations are providing more affordable health care options, so we're opening up many different options for health care. And we have association health plans. We have short-term duration plans. We have all sorts of plans coming out. Many of them are all, uh, already out. Some just literally got out over the last week. So I think it's going to be uh, something great. We uh, have clean coal exports have increased 60 percent last year. Clean coal, which is one of our big assets that we weren't allowed to use for our, our miners. You remember Hillary with the coal, right? Sitting with the miners at the table. Remember, that wasn't so good for her. So the people of West Virginia and all over, you look at Wyoming, you, you look at so many different places where they just, Pennsylvania, where they loved what we did. And it's clean coal, and we have the most modern procedures. But it's a tremendous form of energy in the sense that, in a military way, think of it, coal is indestructible. You can blow up a pipeline, you can blow up the windmills, you know, the windmills. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Bing, that's the end of that windmill. If the birds don't kill it first. The birds can kill it first. They kill so many birds. You look underneath some of those windmills, it's like a killing field of birds. But, uh, you know, that's what they were going to. They were going to windmills. And, you know, don't worry about when the wind doesn't blow. I say, what happens when the wind doesn't blow? Well, then we have a problem. Okay, good. They were putting them in earth where they didn't have much wind, too. And it's a subsidy. You need subsidy for windmills. You need subsidy. Who wants to have energy where you need subsidy? So uh, the coal is doing great. American oil production recently reached an all-time high in our history, and it's going high. We're now the number one in the world in that category. We're number one in the world. Nobody ever thought they'd see that, but we opened it up in a very environmentally friendly way. United States is a net neutral gas exporter. Think of that. And we have a uh, — we're neutral. Now we're going positive. We were even. Now we're going to be very positive on natural gas. We're exporting uh, natural gas at a level that we've never done before. And we're using it at a very high level. Withdrew the United States from the job-killing Paris Climate Accord. That was another beauty. That was a beauty. We signed landmark VA accountability legislation and passed VA choice. So for 40 years, they've been trying to get these things. Accountability and choice. Accountability is you could do anything you wanted if you worked in the VA. And choice is where they can't get a doctor. You go outside, you see a doctor. We pay the bill for our great vets. They've been trying to get that stuff for 45 and even longer. We got it. Done. We secured a record $700 billion in military funding and $716 billion next year. And that's a record that told, I don't think it's going to be broken. I don't think we'll need to be. We're rebuilding our military. And that's a lot of jobs because it's all being built here. Everything's being — we make the best planes in the world. We make the best — we make the best military equipment in the world, missiles and everything. We make the best equipment in the world. We make it here. So we have 700, 716 taking first steps to establish a Space Force, which we need. Confirm more circuit judges. We confirm more circuit court judges than any new administration. And by the time we finish, we're going to have more circuit court judges than any administration in history. In addition, we have already confirmed Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch. And we've nominated a great gentleman, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, who is doing very well. These are great — these are great people, Ed, right? Withdrew from the horrible one-sided Iran deal. Moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem after promises to you. We're protecting Americans from terrorists with our travel ban that just got upheld by the Supreme Court. Right? Issued executive orders keeping open Guantanamo Bay. They wanted to close it. I want to keep it open and use it for the rest. Renegotiating disastrous trade deals and imposing tariffs on foreign steel and aluminum and, frankly, on countries that are taking advantage of us and have been for many decades. We're imposing tariffs. 
And by the way, they impose tariffs on us. You ever see anything like this? I'll have politicians come to me, sir, we want free trade. I said, so do I. Well, such and such a country, you're raising the tariffs. I said, yeah, but they have massive tariffs on us, 50 percent, in one case, 100 percent, in some cases, more than that. What would you say about that? Well, I understand that, sir, but we're now doing it to them. That's not free trade. I said, well, <laughs> it's not stupid trade either, right? It's unbelievable. No, these people are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. And, you know, again, your steel guys in the room, they can tell you what's going on. I see a couple of steel heads back there. But they can tell you what's going on. Well, U.S. Steel is opening up, I think, eight plants. And uh, Nuco and so many different companies have announced plants. Some of them brand new, some of them expansions. There's nothing like what's happening in the steel industry right now. And that's because of what we did with tariffs. They were dumping steel all over this country, dumping it. And in many cases, it was a highly inferior product, really bad stuff. You know, steel can be bad, too. And we're doing beams, and we're doing structural components with bad stuff. No, we don't want that. Net exports are on track to increase by $52 billion over the next year. They don't even talk about that. That came out in the 4.1 report. Uh, to me, it was one of the uh, great things. $52 billion from what it was. We've begun building the wall. We've spent now $3.2 billion. We've spent — We've spent uh, 1.6, and we're spending another 1.6, and now we're asking for $5 billion. And uh, it's going to — it's all happening. We're up in California and San Diego and various other places. We've got a stretch of 80 miles that's just starting. Uh, we're doing well with it, but we're having very little help from Congress, in particular from the Democrats in Congress, because they're just obstructionists. Most of them voted for a wall 10 years ago, 12 years ago. They voted. But they're just a bunch of obstructionists. You know, I have 400 people that haven't got, been approved. They're, these are great people. Like yourselves, they gave up their jobs in order to work in government, and they're going every ounce of time. They're delaying it and obstructing. You know, their whole campaign is resist, and our campaign is make America great again. There's a big difference. Big difference. That's why, I mean, even beyond Claudia, I think Claudia is going to do great. You got to help her, got to make sure, because she's running against somebody that's a total puppet of Nancy Pelosi. Yeah.